NJ Arts News spoke with Dr. Nancy Cantor shortly after she assumed her new position as Chancellor of Rutgers University, Newark. We asked the Chancellor to speak a bit about her personal background and to define social psychology, her own field of inquiry. Growing up in New York City, the arts were a very big piece of my childhood. I, as a dancer, my brother was a painter. My mother, even though she was a social gerontologist, she also did sculptures. And a parallel theme, but they often intersected, was a social justice theme. My family was very socially active, always had been. And and then I, you know, I grew up in the kind of crucible of the women's movement, anti-war, civil rights movement. That's the life I grew up in in New York City. I think of social psychology as thinking about cultures and groups and Mm -hmm. geographies and the way in which different groups intersect or or don't. (laughs) We asked Dr. Cantor what excited her most about coming to live and work in Newark, New Jersey. What Newark represents both in its extraordinary history, history of rich, rich cultural assets and diversity, and history of struggle is what metropolitan America and indeed metropolitan centers all around the world are really all about. If Newark doesn't thrive, this country doesn't thrive. How do you build healthy, strong neighborhoods? How do the arts invigorate civic life and bring groups together? I was talking to a humanist the other day who was teaching a class, and he said, you know, I have 40 kids in the class, and there are 17 different home languages spoke How do you create an educational pipeline that is robust and works for all kids, not just for kids whose families can afford that? All those cutting-edge issues are here. Our conversation turned to the news media. How would Dr. Cantor suggest reframing the news so that it might empower all citizens and remind us of our common purpose? I think it's an incredibly important question. The media defines the experience of democracy in this country. There's a question to focus on about the role of the news media as a source of discourse in addition to a source of headlines and information. How do you feed that diversity of perspectives and feed it back so that what we're doing is creating a discourse that is not zero-sum, that is not about focusing entirely on challenges, but framing challenges as opportunities and possibilities. And I don't think this is Pollyannish, but there's a framing of discourse and the way in which you try to empower different voices that I think is absolutely critical. You have to create really safe third spaces for discourse like that, where power isn't quite the adjudicating theme where lots of voices get validated. What did Dr. Cantor mean by third space? And what are the first and second spaces? The first and second, you in your space and me in my space. Mm -hmm. Our individualistic ability to select ourselves into spaces that don't stretch us beyond who we are. The third space is a construct I've used a lot. You create third spaces of collaboration that become co-owned, become co-defined and created and recreated and evolve, and where trust can really begin to form. Third spaces rebalance power relationships. What that comes down to is really planting a sense of social responsibility via the discourse that started by the news media. While on the topic of the individual and society, we asked Dr. Cantor to define civics. What does civics mean to her, and what is its relationship to economics and democracy? If one talks about the economy as gross domestic product, or as the stock market, or as any of the sort of proxies for what one means by the economy, those proxies are almost entirely driven by a very small proportion of the country. Who's left out in the digital divide? I tend to think of citizenship, civics, and community as really interrelated. For me, civics is less about knowing who was president in what year. It's less politics, if you will. 
John Dewey, he said democracy needs to be worked on over and over again. And what he meant by working on democracy was working on relationships, democratic living. Whereas I think it's great that there's a renewed sense of civics education. I think we have to broaden the definition of civics beyond the political rendition. Dr. Cantor, Chancellor of Rutgers University, Newark, also broadened the concept of environment when addressing ecological issues. Urban centers are environments, and we have huge issues of health and well-being in neighborhoods like in Newark. It's partly the river, and it's partly post-industrial stresses, Mm -hmm. but it's also the way in which we, again, take responsibility for the places that Mm -hmm. we live in. Part of environmental awakening is imagining the place you are and being of that place. And finally, Dr. Nancy Cantor's vision for Newark and what she hopes to see in the next three or four years. We have a real opportunity at this moment to form communities with government, business, citizens, residents, politicians, the arts. We have a chance to think about how you educate the next diverse generation of Americans to really take social responsibility. How you think about the invigorating role of the arts and culture as a way of imagining place and the place you're in and what you could be. We'll see a lot more students and people and entrepreneurs living downtown. I hope we'll see educational attainment boosts I hope we'll see healthier neighborhoods and safer neighborhoods and and a sense of well-being for kids and their families. It's incredible arts and culture in this town, and we'll see it come to the fore and be the catalyst. I hope we'll see the incredible leveraging of intellectual diversity and social diversity that can bring that power to bear in this region and beyond. That was Dr. Nancy Cantor, Chancellor of Rutgers University, Newark, and resident of Newark, speaking to NJ Arts News from her office on campus. This is part three of the Words Matter radio project, funded in part by the New Jersey Council for the Humanities. I'm Susan Haig with NJ Arts News.